I've worked uh, for many years trying to connect uh, physical theories to experimental observation. What inspired me about going into particle physics was at the time it uh, struck me as being the most fundamental where you had a chance of understanding more about the laws of nature. The most exciting time has been when uh, the gluon was discovered. When it was discovered, uh, DAISY, uh, it certainly was a very exciting and rewarding time for me to see the ideas that I had worked on come to fruition. What is amazing is that something as simple and elegant as a standard model can describe all of the forces in nature with the exception of the gravitational interaction. In the late 60s, our understanding of the nucleus uh, was based on the idea that there must be a strong force to overcome the electromagnetic repulsion of the protons. But the origin of the strong force was somewhat unclear. I went to uh, the laboratory at CERN in Geneva and uh, there uh, continued the work on field theory descriptions of the strong interactions involving quarks. At that time, it wasn't commonly accepted that quarks existed. And while I was there, there was a fundamental discovery of the J psi, which was a bound state of the charm anti-charm quark, which initially people did not understand, but uh, subsequently realized that it could only correspond to quarks. Gluons are central to our understanding of the strong interactions. They are the force carriers analogous to the photon which mediates the electromagnetic interaction. They couple to quarks and bind them together. What uh, John Ellis and Mary Key Gaillard and I did was to realize that you could look for the gluon in an analogous way to the way Quarks had been looked for by studying the jet of particles they turn into. So in a process in which you have electron positron annihilation into a photon, producing a quark, anti-quark and gluon final state, you would expect to see three jets and their angular distribution would be characteristic of the interaction of the gluon with the quarks. This was subsequently looked for at DAISY and indeed they found unambiguous evidence that there was a new particle beyond the quarks which had the properties of the gluon. That discovery was uh, really fundamental to our, our understanding of the strong interactions. I went from CERN to Caltech uh, having some understanding of this development of QCD as a model for the strong interactions. Surprisingly this was not uh, particularly well studied at the time. At lunch, uh, I was sitting opposite Feynman. He was talking about his parton model. And I was surprised because at CERN we had learnt that we could calculate what in went on inside the so-called black box that Feynman had, where the partons interact. And I said, why don't you calculate this? So Feynman ignored me completely and continued talking. And I thought, well, I'm just a little person. It doesn't matter. But he came into my office that afternoon and asked what I meant. And I said, well, we have a candidate theory called QCD that seems quite promising. And for the next month or two, he would come into my office occasionally. What he wanted to do was to discover QCD for himself. And he would say what he'd done, and I'd say, that's the way it goes, but we've learned something else. So my work, which uh, has largely been looking at supersymmetric extensions of a standard model, ultimately relates to the nature of unification be it grand unification or string unification. And one of the active areas that I'm involved in is trying to make predictions for the parameters of the standard model in the context of an underlying unified string theory. Why the mathematics that we have discovered should be relevant to the physical processes is surprising, I think, and something uh, that may have a fundamental reason, but uh, continually amazes me. <laughs>